If a particle of light of sufficient energy hits the surface of a material, up, an electron can pop out. This phenomenon is called the photoelectric effect. Among other things, this effect is at the heart of solar power generation and digital photography. Yes, the technology behind the photographic sensors of your phone is based on the photoelectric effect. That's really cool stuff. Do you want to know more? Come on, follow me. In quantum mechanics, light is considered to be made of particles called photons. You can see photons like little packs of energy. They are actually quanta of energy. To calculate the energy of a photon, you just need to multiply Planck's constant with the frequency associated with that photon. For visible light, for example, this frequency is perceived by us humans as the color of the light. When a photon hits the surface of a material, it can get absorbed. So, where does the energy of the photon go? The energy of the photon is transferred entirely to one single electron of the material. By absorbing this light energy, the electron gains kinetic energy and thanks to this can escape the material. Now, the electron is called a photoelectron. But there is a threshold for this to happen. If the energy of the photon is too low, the electron does not have enough energy to escape from the material. It remains stuck. That threshold in energy is a property of the material itself and is called the work function of the material, phi. On the other hand, if the incident photon has a higher energy than the work function, then the electron gets ejected. The surplus of energy that electron has after being ejected is its residual kinetic energy. Yes. Once ejected, if the electron still has some kinetic energy remaining, it can shoot away from the material. The work function of a solid material is defined as the minimum energy required to remove an electron from the surface of that solid material into vacuum. The energy of the photon is first used to eject the electron, and what remains is now the kinetic energy of the electron. Let's rearrange this equation by placing the kinetic energy as a subject, and you get Einstein's photoelectric equation. However, this is not exactly how you might see this equation written in textbooks. What you would see instead is this. Do you notice a subscript? What is this max doing there? Why K max? In the explanation I gave you just now, there is an assumption that is not always well defined in textbooks. We assume here that the photon is absorbed by an electron so close to the surface that the electron does not interact with other particles of the material before getting ejected. Yet, it is possible that a photon reaches a depth of a few nanometers under the surface before being absorbed by an electron. And now, this electron still needs to reach the surface before getting ejected. On its way to the surface, the electron interacts with other particles of the material and, in the process, loses energy. That implies that we must add a term to Einstein's photoelectric equation. The kinetic energy of the electron after being ejected from the material is equal to the energy of the incident photon minus the work function minus the work the electron did on the other particles of the material on its way to the surface. For an electron very close to the surface, when absorbing the photon, such work is zero. But on the other hand, an electron deeper under the surface, when it absorbs a photon, needs to do extra work to escape from the material. In that case, the remaining kinetic energy of that electron, once it is out of the material, is smaller. Hey, why not do the conclusion in the garden? <laughs> when incident photons hitting a material have an energy larger than the material's work function, photoelectrons are emitted by this material. If a photon electron does not interact with neighboring particles before leaving the material, its kinetic energy will be maximum. That's what the max subscript means. So, 
the photoelectric equation you find in textbooks is just for this specific photoelectron of maximum kinetic energy. For all other photoelectrons, you need to take into account the work done when interacting more or less with their neighboring particles before leaving the material. Their kinetic energy form a distribution, a little bit like this one. The reason why it is preferred to express the photoelectric equation with K max is that K max is easy to measure experimentally. You see, if you plot K max versus the energy of the incident photon, very interesting things about the material can be determined, like the work function. You can even deduce the value of Planck's constant from such graph. If you would like me to dive into this in a future video, let me know in the comments. Et voilà, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you found it interesting or useful, support the channel with a like, a comment, or by subscribing and smashing this notification bell. Another way to support the channel is to listen to the Physics Made Easy music album. Yeah, there's a Physics Made Easy music album, it's here. And if you like it, download a copy. That would be a great encouragement for me. I will place a link to the album in the description. In the meantime, I wish you the best, and I'll see you soon for the next episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao!